Hi, welcome to Connecting Hope, brought to you by LifeGift and Nora's Home. We hope that this webinar series will provide a sense of community, support, and education for our transplant family and friends. My name is Leslie Meggs, and I'm the Community Engagement Specialist at LifeGift. I'm excited to announce our guest today, Amanda De Jesus, who is a heart recipient and a professional chef who's going to share with us a recipe that's both heart and kidney healthy. Welcome. Hi. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here and to okay. be able to share my story and this recipe. Absolutely. We're so excited that you are here. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and your transplant journey? Well, I'm Amanda. She said I am a 19-year heart transplant recipient. Um, I was 15 years old when I received my heart transplant. Uh, it's been a journey, to say the least. Um, I was a normal kid, I will say. I had I was born with heart disease. I had a hole in my heart. They repaired it. Everything was fine for a few years and then when I hit my teenage years, about 13, I, I went to get a physical to play basketball in middle school. And when I did my cardiology follow-up, they figured out that I was in dilated cardiomyopathy and they were surprised I even felt good enough to play basketball. <laughs> so they immediately pulled me from sports and I started the process. I got a pacemaker and within a year of having the pacemaker, I was living 90% off of it. So they went ahead and put me on the transplant list. I waited in hospital for about four months, and which is a blessing, I know. And I got my heart. Uh, since then, I was able to finish high school, um, go to college, culinary school, study abroad in China, and live what I would say, what I would call a full life. Um, unfortunately, about 17 years post-transplant, uh, I started to decline again, started to get some symptoms. And now currently I'm back on the transplant list, but not just for a heart this time, also for a kidney. Um, taking all of those incredible transplant drugs, they do wonders to your kidneys. <laughs> um, so now I'm back on the list and I'm just, you know, living every day as best as I can as I wait for that, what I call my third miracle. So until then, I'm just gonna continue to help people and cook good food and just live my life. <laughs> so today I'm gonna be making beef burritos, which is, one of my favorite things, well, I love Mexican food. We were here in Houston, Texas. That is a huge um, cuisine that we love to eat a lot. And I wanted to make sure that you could have those same things at home and within your dietary restrictions. I'm currently following the kidney diet. I know that that's not an easy diet by any means. So I'm gonna try my best to make you still have the things you love even within your dietary parameters. So this is a very simple recipe. If I'm not mistaken, it only has like six ingredients and it only has like five steps. So like I said, anyone can do it. It's very simple. And it's very um, alternative friendly. There's many different options if you don't necessarily eat ground beef. So keep that in mind as well. But we're gonna start off at first with our vegetables. So we're gonna cut up and we need one fourth cup of bell pepper and one fourth cup of onion. I'm currently not gonna cut it all because we don't really need it all. But you could just cut everything all at once and then bell peppers and onions, they're a good thing to have like if you're ready, pre-cut them in your freezer and you can use them for other dishes or you wanna throw them in your scrambled eggs in the morning. It's a great way to add your fruits and vegetables to your meals to get those you know, greens in and all that kind of stuff. And this is just a rough chop, rough dice, nothing fancy, um, nothing too difficult. And it doesn't have to be green bell pepper if you wanna use a different color, that is also totally your preference. This is, like I said, this is a very adaptable recipe and it's all about your taste and flavors. It's just within your dietary parameters. So if you don't like seeds, don't use seeds. Seeds give a little bit of heat if you're looking for that heat. But like I said, we're not even gonna use the whole pepper. Um, really one side is about the one fourth cup you need. You will need more if you multiply this recipe. Now we're gonna attempt to cut onions and not cry. Tell me about what it was like when they first told you that you'd need a heart transplant. Um, it was shocking because even though I've had heart disease all of my life, I in theory felt fine. So I didn't understand why they were all so serious because I was like, well, I feel great. I was just playing basketball the other day. I go outside with my friends. Like I live a normal life, but not realizing how sick I actually was was probably the hardest part. And adjusting to the lifestyle because I'm a 15 year old kid. I want to eat and I want to eat what my friends are eating, not what they want me to eat. So that was probably what inspired me to become a chef was so that I could find foods that I love or still eat the foods that I love because I felt like everything was taken away from me. 
because like my friends could eat McDonald's, my friends, because again, I'm a teenager. Now as an adult, I know better, but uh, my friends could still eat pizza and whatever they want. And I was on like this heart healthy, low sodium diet. And my mom loved her to death. She wasn't the best cook. So to her, she was like, well, you just eat this like <laughs> low sodium chicken noodle soup. And I'm like, no, I want food. And so I know that that's why I ended up where I am today so that I could make and help adapt healthy recipes for other transplant patients like myself so that we didn't have to struggle with food because I'm Puerto Rican. My culture, we eat differently. We love pork and pig and this kind of stuff and fried plantains and I couldn't have any of it. And you tell one of your old school aunts that you can't eat her food. She gets very upset. <laughs> so um, it was hard. It was a big adjustment. So that's what inspired me to go to culinary school so that I could eat and develop recipes and figure out healthier ways to eat the foods that I love without the sacrifice, if that makes sense. Yeah, that is so neat. How yes. cool. So did you start cooking for yourself right away or did it take Yeah, as soon time? as I got my transplant and I was sent home, I started cooking immediately and really baking too. And then I fell in love with it. And so that by the time I graduated high school, I was like, I'm going to culinary school. I'm not even going to go anywhere else. I went, so I went to the Art Institute of Houston and got my culinary degree. So we have one fourth cup of onion. So now that we have cut up the vegetables, we're going to go ahead and put everything on the heat, heat up our one pound of ground beef and start cooking up the process. All right, so get you a hot skillet pan. Um, or a pot, whatever your preference is actually. You're gonna spray it with a lot, um, a little nonstick olive oil, nonstick spray, nothing major, and then you're going to add those peppers and onions and saute them. You're just about two to three minutes just till they kind of get soft. So, I mean, you want a little bit of a bite, but you don't want it to be raw. So you're just kind of cooking it down a little bit, extracting some of those flavors. We're gonna add our pound of ground beef now, and we're just gonna mix it all together. Let the meat brown and let mix the veggies within the pan. So that was definitely an adjustment. I remember my senior year, um, I caught mono out of nowhere and I had to miss a week of school and like literally having to like write my chefs like I'm so sorry but I'm a transplant patient and it's going to take me longer to recover than the average person you know so that was definitely like a struggle for sure and an adjustment and then convincing your parents and a transplant team to let you go to China to study abroad at 19 years old probably my biggest flex i'm not even gonna lie <laughs> i'm not even gonna lie <laughs> to convince your parents and a transplant team to let you go for a month to china yeah that was yeah that was but it, it's a funny story because I, I went to my mom and i said i got this opportunity at school they picked me as one of the chefs to go study abroad and i was like and she was like that's amazing and she was like where and i'm like china she's like no and so like after some talking, she was like, well, talk to the team. And if they say yes, then I guess we can let you go. And the team goes and I put them on the spot and they're like, well, if your parents say yes. So they thought the other would say no. And when they both said that, I was like, I'm going to China. <laughs> so I studied abroad in China, which was life-changing experience. I had plenty of meds. We had plans, contingency plans if anything should happen. I was very lucky that nothing occurred and I was able to complete the semester with no injury, no harm, no nothing. But so I, that's probably, you know, it, to be able to say with a transplant, a heart transplant that I walked the Great Wall of China is something that that's once in a lifetime. You're not going to get that. So I definitely took advantage and I definitely will say since my transplant, I have found many moments that I got to do things that I never thought I would do, let alone be able to do with a heart transplant. Uh, so after you drain the meat, you are going to add um, a fourth cup of tomato salt, a tomato puree, puree. And then you're going to also add, I have some no salt tomato seasoning that I make at home. You can even make this too. Um, it's literally two tablespoons of chili, chili powder, two tablespoons of paprika, a teaspoon of oregano, 
a teaspoon of garlic powder, a teaspoon of onion powder, and a little uh, black pepper. But also um, there's brands like Mrs. Dash and a few others that sell um, no salt uh, taco seasoning if you don't feel like making it at home. Um, but if you do make it at home, put it in a mason jar, a, a container, and it literally will last for six months. I also like to add just a touch of water to help kind of mellow out and combine the seasonings and the meat together. It seems that the meat absorbs the seasonings better when you add a little bit of water and cook that down. And when you kind of cook down that water and it evaporate, eva evaporates, you will know pretty much that you're almost at the finish line. So as a transplant patient, you kind of know that there's many moments. Everything feels like a big deal because you never thought you would get that chance. Graduating high school, graduating college, getting married, meeting, you know, really, honestly, I fell in love with my best friend. He was my best friend. We had a lot in common. And the more and more we started hanging out, we just kind of fell in love with each other and decided to date. And from dating, ended up, you know, engaged and married. Um, but I kind of knew that he was different when he could visit me in the hospital and not squirm or be uncomfortable. Um, me telling him things or him hearing the harder news because when I got sick again, he was there when they told me everything and it didn't, he didn't flinch, he didn't squirm, he was just like, I'm here, whatever you need. And I'm going to be honest, I didn't always find that in all of my other years of dating and that just told me that he was different and he was special. So. I never thought I would get married if I'm being transparent. So the fact that I was able to do that has really been a blessing and really just another thing I'm grateful for for my donors and my transplant and the opportunity that I was able to do that. So do you cook the kidney and heart healthy food for him? Too? Yes, I will say he's very flexible. So he allows me to cook the meals that I need within my restraints. And then if he needs to, what I say, doctor them up for him, he does that on his own, because I get it, he's not in the same boat, but he also realized that eating like I eat also is healthier for him in the long run as well. Mm -hmm. So, and I, that's the you know part that I enjoy about him. He's like, well, you realize how much you really don't need salt if you're really using spices and herbs and adding flavors in that way. So he's like, I don't really miss the salt like I thought I would. Now as a kidney patient, not having a lot of dairy, that he struggles with, because <laughs> I know as myself, I, I miss cheese, I'm not gonna lie. So I, he understands that struggle. I feel you on that. Yeah, see? <laughs> you get it. So you see, we're just browning it all together. You can see that the seasonings have now attached to the meat. We're gonna let this water cook down just a little bit more and then I think we'll be able to assemble the burritos. Now, like I was just saying, this is very adaptable. So if you don't do ground beef, you can do ground turkey, ground chicken. If you are a vegan um, and you wanna use Beyond Meat, you can try that, tofu scramble you can kind of use tofu. So there's, this is a very flexible recipe, very adaptable to fit whatever your dietary restraints are. So that's what I do appreciate about this. And that even goes for the tortilla. You can use flour, corn. Now they make ones with almond flour or coconut flour. So whatever, or if you want to put this on a bed of lettuce, knock yourself out, like whatever truly works for you, it's definitely there. Okay. So now we have cooked this down. It smells amazing. So let's go ahead and assemble our burritos. So now that your meat is all cooked up with your veggies, we're gonna assemble the burritos. Now this is a kidney friendly one, so there's not gonna be the cheese, unfortunately. I will be honest and say that. But you, if it's in within your dietary parameters, like I said, this is a very um, adaptable recipe. So you can doctor this up however you want. I know people love to load burritos with different things, but this is just a simple meat burrito. So you're gonna put your meat in there and then you're gonna to start to fold this up. Make sure you fold in the sides so nothing falls out. Leslie, do you mind handing me that knife? Flip Blue. it over and I'm just gonna cut it in half. And there you go. You have your beef burrito. Like I said, very adaptable. You can add different things to this if you would like, or if it's within your dietary parameters, but this is just a basic kidney and heart friendly beef burrito. 
I'd like to thank Nora's Home for letting us use their beautiful kitchen. And I'd also like to thank Amanda for coming today and sharing her story. Thank you for having me. It was really a pleasure. And Nora's Home, you have a beautiful kitchen. <laughs> it is a great kitchen. Yes, it is. Well, thank you for sharing this recipe with us. Of course. And we wish you the best of luck, thank best you. of health. Thank Hope you. to see you again. Yes. And you can find Nora's Home at norashome.org, LifeGift at lifegift.org, and I am Leslie Meggs, our Community Engagement Specialist at LifeGift. Thank you and have a wonderful day.